Hey Geometry Kids, welcome to 6.2 uh, Properties of Parallelograms. We're going to start off with a little definition here. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral, four sides, with two sets of parallel sides. That is the definition. So if I were to do a quick drawing, okay, here's my parallelogram. Two sets, so we'll say this one's parallel to this one. And we'll say this one's parallel to this one. That's actually a pretty good drawing. I'm going to sit back and light it for a second. Mm-hmm. That's a nice parallel grid. Okay. If you didn't notice, 12 slides on this one, guys. Ah, no, right? Even I'm going to get bored. Any quadrilateral. And that means any four side figure, right? Four sides. Opposite sides are the ones that do not share an angle. They're opposite. Like this one and this one are opposite sides. And the opposite angles are the guys who are opposite. They don't share any sides, okay? They're on the opposite end of the room. They have to be separated. Okay. Okay. Let's get some some things here. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. Okay. So if you know this is a parallelogram, that's the symbol for parallelogram. It kind of looks like a parallelogram. You know, you can just draw a little boom. Well. Ah, that's terrible, Mr. Let's try again. You can draw a little boom. Ah, come on. Boom. You could draw that for parallelogram. Then the opposite sides are congruent. So the sides that are parallel to each other are congruent. So like A, B, and C, D. I guess so. And B, C, and A, D. So B, C, before Christ, A, D, Anno Dinami. Yeah. No, well, he guys probably didn't think I knew that. Silly gooses. Okay. Angles of a polygon that share a side are consecutive. This is a different one though. Consecutive means like C and B, they share that side. They're on the same side. C is also consecutive with, you know, D, right? Because they share that side. Okay. If you share a side, you're consecutive because I can go from one to the other, right? There's a road between our houses. They're consecutive. So let's see a different theorem. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then consecutive angles are supplementary, means they add up to 180. Think about this, guys. Grandma really blew your mind. These are par all parallel lines, right? Parallel lines crossed by transversal. Same side interior angles add up to 180 degrees, right? So B and C add to 20. Another thing I want you to think about for quadrilaterals. Not a quad on. For parallelograms, big angle plus little angle. That's his rap name. Equals 180. Okay? So the big angles plus the little angle equals 180. Okay? Let's take a look at this guy. It's a flower thing. Being powered by a flower. I don't know. I don't know what this is. It's, it's strange, very strange. So, it's a perpetual motion device. If this angle is 64, what is P? Well, P is going to be 180 minus 64, because they add up to equal 180, which is, which one is it? 116. Okay, that's all there is to it, guys. 
What's angle R then? 116. What's Q gonna be then? 64. Which leads us to another. Well, clear. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent. So like B and D and A and C are congruent. So again, little angle is congruent to the little angles. And the big angle is congruent to the big angle. Okay, and the big angle plus the little angle equals 180. Again, parallel lines, guys, crossed by transversals. That's where these theorems are coming from. All right, here we go. Let's do a proof. ABCD is a parallelogram. AK is congruent to MK. We need to prove that BCD is congruent to CMD. This is tricky one. It's a tricky one. So first we're going to start with our given. Okay. Now what can we do with that? What do you guys know about this angle, angle BCD? in angle A. That's right, they're congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle BCD by definition of parallelogram. Because opposite, opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. I should probably make you write that one. Yeah, well, maybe you should. Opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. Okay. Now, here's the tough one that is, I think, going to be the hardest one for you guys. These two big sides are congruent, right? So, what do we know about KAM? I'm sorry, what do we know about angle A and M? That's right, they're congruent. Because they are an isosceles triangle. See how it's all coming together, guys? Where your base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Now, if A equals BCD and A equals M, how can we get BCD to be congruent to M. Well, you're making a train. Which is the same as CMD by your transfer property. Okay, and that's it. That's all there is to the proof, guys. Not as bad as what appeared. We got more theorems. Check out, we got plenty of times. If ABCD is a parallelogram and I draw uh, diagonals in it, which means lines that go like this, then they bisect each other. They cut each other in half. They are not congruent though, but they cut each other in half. Okay. Find x and y in this equation if if uh, if they bisect each other. Okay, so three a. This is a tough one. So I know that st is congruent to qt, right? So that means that x plus 1 equals y, right? I also know pt is congruent 
to TR, right? So 3y minus 7 equals 2x. Ah, what do I do? What do I do? You guys remember substitution? I can take that and plug it in for y, right? I can take x plus 1 because it equals y. So wherever I see a y, I can plug it in. So I end up with this 3 times x plus 1 minus 7 equals 2x. So what do I get here? 3x plus 3 minus 7 equals 2x. So is that negative 4? Subtract my 3x from both sides. So 4 equals x, right? Phew. Now I take this guy and we'll plug in for x. Because then 4 plus 1 equals y. y equals 5. Okay? Am I done? No. So y equals 5, right? If that equals 5, that means this side equals 5, right? So that means sq equals 5 plus 5, which is 10. Now that means pr equals, that's 2 times 8, or 2 times 4, which is 8. That's 8, and this side's 8. So that equals 16. And that, now we're done. Not an easy problem, guys. Last theorem. Well, basis says if you have parallel lines and you have a transversal that goes across them, it cuts that transversal. If it cuts one of the transversal and equal parts, it cuts any transversal and equal parts because they are equidistant from each other. Sorry about that, we had some baby issues. Let's take a look at what that means. Use the problem and I'm figuring problem four. If EF equals FG equals GH and they all equal six, and AD equals 15, what is CD? Well, if this is cut into congruent parts, this one's cut into congruent parts, okay? If your total's 15 and you cut it into three equal parts, each one will be five. And that's it, guys. That's where we're going to end it.